They hate my job. I'm here to complain about my boss. They hate my boss. How my job is. I hate my boss. You know what? You're a sad old man. I hate my new boss. She's a total bitch and I hate her. And that's why I hate my boss. Seriously, the guy's insane. The other thing that Google has done remarkably well is to hire uh, smart people. There's 21,640 men and women who have dedicated their lives to keeping the lights on in the 11 states that we do business. You've got to make sure you have a strong organization that's capable of making the decisions it needs to make. Human resources, human capital, the people, people. If you've said if you want a job done properly, do it yourself. More than twice this year, HR have the solution. It's more than a quicksand of red flags, lawsuits and pointless rules. Done right, HR is a game changer. Like every business discipline, HR has its actors, the people who change the definition of what's expected. When David Fairhurst joined McDonald's, the fast food giant was in the news for all the wrong reasons. McJobs, McLibel and McMorgan Spurlock. I experienced that at most dinner parties that I went to where people, good or bad, would have an opinion. Most people had a very bad opinion about McJobs in particular and the people that were in them. But David saw something else. And that was at odds with the pride, the commitment, the training that I saw when I came inside this organisation. Turning that around was and is a huge task. But while the rehabilitation of the Golden Arches may not be complete, profits and perceptions are on the up. It started, says David, by addressing the issue of what HR calls itself. For years, if not a decade, HR has been very self-indulgent around what it calls itself, whether it deserves a seat at the table. Um, and quite frankly, it needs to earn its seat at the table. And in my view, it needs to be less self-indulgent about looking at its name uh, and its purpose. What HR should be talking about, rather than what it calls itself, is around how do you truly understand what it is that your business needs? What's the engine around people that drives your business performance? How can you get more sales and profitability from people? And then secondly, what is it that your people truly value about working for your organization to really understand what it is that differentiates you as an employer? Bring those two things together, says David, and you create an energy that can be released around your people. And when you do that, the HR department can talk about what is the future talent needs of our organization? How can we generate better insight around people? How can we get rid of organisational silos that, de that destroy progress in an organisation? How can we support change in business? How do we support leaders in terms of integrity, values-based leadership? This programme may not yet be offering a completely balanced diet, but Misty Reich, HR Director for KFC, agrees with David. First, you need to understand what is it that the business is trying to accomplish? What is the core strategy? And then from that point, do you start talking about how the people resources in that business can drive towards that? One of HR's many key roles is to ensure continuity in an organization. Non-incremental change to encourage progress, incremental change to encourage growth, fresh blood, and steady hands. It's a difficult balancing act and one which toy manufacturer Mattel focused on intently following some acquisition-based culture shock. Even Fisher-Price that had been an acquisition for earlier had a very its own and distinct culture. We had just bought the American Girl Company in Madison, Wisconsin had its own and distinct culture. And it's very hard to develop people in an environment like that. And I think that's what we were facing. So early on the key was how do we create without destroying the individual entrepreneurial ship that was going on in these locations. One part of the solution was a process Mattel called the quality of organization review. Every year, the senior management from all divisions with their heads of HR present to Alan and Mattel's CEO. How their organization is doing, what their organization issues are, who are the key people, who are the people at the very senior levels, and who are behind them. We have these extensive reviews going on, and as you can imagine, if that's going on at the senior most level of the organization, it filters down, so it's going on through the organization. And then we take that review, um, Mr. Eckert and myself, and we do this with the board probably twice a year, where we review the senior most talent uh, of the organization with the board. So they know who they are. They get to see them during presentations. 
So we really make this succession planning process that we have very, very much a piece of everything we do here. At McDonald's, David Fairhurst believes succession planning is also integral to the business, but not in its current most common form. The reality is that that is not dynamic enough to meet the ongoing needs of the organisation. What you need to be doing is to be thinking about strategic workforce planning. So in other words, what are the operational income drivers of your organisation over the next, say, three to five years? Working in a non-silo way with your business intelligence, your business strategy people, to figure out what's going to drive the profitability. And then, very simply, to map your talent capability against those drivers of the business. So my call really is, if you're going to meet the business needs both now and in the future, we need to be far more dynamic, fluid if you like, and non-siloed in the way in which we approach talent in organisations. And that requires, I think, a different attitude towards talent. But with a word of warning, here's Alan Kay. Be careful what you wish for. I would say that early on, hiring in at <coughs> maybe senior manager and above, we'd probably hire in from the outside about 75% of the talent coming from the outside of the organization. There was almost a philosophy of, you know, we, you need new blood, you need new ideas, bring it in from the outside versus develop from within. We need to turn that around. And we spend a lot of time with leadership development. We spend a lot of time in succession planning now, understanding who's ready for the next move, what do they need, and when. Uh, and we've really come full circle. Now we're about, I'd say we're about 90% uh, promotions are from within, 10% from the outside. And as an HR professional, I would say we're probably swung the pendulum a little too far. That you should always invest in your people may sound like a no-brainer, but... You get a lot of um, people in, 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 in over the years say, if you invest in people, you know, they leave the organisation, how do you get your return on investment? When the truth of the matter is... The more you give people transferable skills, the less likely they are to transfer. For a frankly brilliant example of what can be achieved when you strive for best practice and are creative with your investment in people, we move from potato chips to silicon chips, from Big Mac to Big Blue, from, I think you get the picture, IBM has combined leadership training and social responsibility to incredible effect. What was clear to me at IBM is that we had some unique capabilities, uh, and again, our innovation and our technology, but then uh, clearer and clearer to me, it was our people, the talent within the company. The result, a corporate Peace Corps or corporate service corps to give it the correct IBM title. And this is what great HR can do for your business. A corporate service corps, and yes, we do characterize it as a corporate version of the Peace Corps, is fundamentally about leadership and leadership development. What the corporate service corps offers to our best emerging leaders within the company. This is 500 people selected in a very competitive way uh, uh, over in each year and they're assigned in teams of 8 to 10 in communities in Nigeria or Ghana and they work as a team living together working on a critical social problem usually connected to economic growth job development using their technical skills working as a team of people. So at the end of that process, what we've identified is people have in completely improved their teaming skills, their, their cultural adaptability, their understanding of growth markets, their understanding of the relationship between government, business, and the not-for-profit sector. And that's not even the best of it. And then there's another advantage that perhaps uh, you might not have thought about going into it, uh, in an independent evaluation done by the Harvard Business School, 100% of the participants in the Corporate Service Corps indicated that participation in this program increased their likelihood of completing their career at IBM. And those are the Meet the Boss TV first three of our top 10 HR best practices. In part two, why David Fairhurst kept referring to organizational silos that, de that destroy progress in an organization. And the business changing power of practical HR metrics.